So whenever you have objects that are moving in keyframe animation, okay, simple keyframe animation, first off, they're, they're going to be moving in a straight line. So that's one thing that's important to realize, and I will show you how you can make things curve and do other stuff uh, later if you wish. But the other problem is, is we have our circle and our cube um, colliding here. They're slowing down before they actually reach that moment of collision, which would not happen. So when you go to the animation windows here and you can select an object, you will see the curves for that object. And these curves represent the acceleration. So right now I've got this cube moving in the, um, in the y-axis. And I can adjust these curves by grabbing them, OK? Or I can also isolate them by turning off the eyeballs. Okay, so I don't need scale, I don't need anything. I just want this Y acceleration here. And you can, let's grab the, the uh, things, the handles here, and you can adjust them. But you can also click on it and, let's see here, if I remember. Auto clamped, you can change these to free under the handle type. Okay, we'll bring that back here like this. And now I can adjust the curve like this. So I can grab these handles, right click, hold and drag, left click to set it. So now the acceleration, it starts out, it accelerates slowly into the middle of the curve, it collides in the, at this point, and then it immediately rebounds back and then slowly decelerates to its stopping point. Boom. Okay. Now that doesn't quite look perfect because the sphere is not doing the same thing. But that's essentially how you can work on, you see how that's so much better than the sphere right now. Okay, because it's not slowing down into the point. So if I click this, I can do the same thing. Turn off all these, just isolate my one axis. Um, I do believe there's another way to, uh, to click on this so that, but oh well. I forget exactly how else you can change the, the, the keyframe, but you just go here, set the uh, handles to free, okay? And now I can again drag, left click, you drag with the right, or uh, right click, hold it down, and then left click to set it. And so now they're both accelerating, bouncing off each other rather, sudden, rather suddenly, and then slowing down towards the end. If I clicked on this and I grabbed that handle and extended it, then what would happen is the bounce off, the speed would be a little steeper, and a fall off is going to be a little bit longer. So it's actually going to slow down even more towards the last keyframe there. See that? So you can control that. So if I want it to slow down more suddenly, I shorten this handle. Okay. <clears throat> and now it's going to bounce back very suddenly, and then it's going to deaccelerate in a pretty stable amount, you know, or a pretty stable uh, rate of slowdown. That's really a horrible phrase, but I'll, I'll use it. Um, and then into the um, thing. And then thereby, I can also basically tell the, the viewer that these objects are made of different masses. So the rate of slowdown, if the rate of slowdown is really fast here, okay, then, then this might be a, um, a lighter object. But if I click on the uh, cube and I make the bounce back pretty fast, but the rate of slowdown pretty steep, then it's going to kind of signify that this cube has more mass because it's going to bounce back, and then it's going to start slowing down, and it's going to be really slow towards the end. So what that's basically telling the viewer is this thing's heavier. I also can communicate that by making this take a, um, less time to slow down. So I could take my, um, my cube here, and I could grab that and bring that keyframe forward a few frames. And now what's going to happen is, going to bounce off, and that's going to slow down first before the sphere does. And so I'm signifying that the cube is actually of greater mass, you know, greater weight than, than the sphere. Does that make sense?
So, and you can play with these things a lot. Uh, you, do, you can also get really messed up with them too. So go slowly, test each one every time you make a, a change. Kind of test it so that if you do, um, if you do make something that's you know, weird or, or bad, you can undo it. So right now, based on this, I'm not, like, they're not hitting each other with enough velocity to uh, warrant the bounce back. You see what I mean? They're, they don't, I mean, the bounce back is never going to be faster than the collision because of the way physics work, right? You lose energy whenever you collide or whenever you slide on something. So they're going to transfer energy into each other. They're not going to bounce back faster, faster than they hit each other. It's just not going to happen. You know, think of a bouncing ball. You bounce the ball once, it goes up, say, eye height. It hits the ground on the second one, it goes maybe to your chin. Third bounce, it's maybe now at your shoulders. Fourth bounce, it's at your stomach, and so on and so forth. <clears throat> so, this is very inaccurate in the way that I would expect objects to, to behave when they are moving. So, I would need to kind of start adjusting my keyframes to kind of make that happen. So what I might do is click these and bring them forward so the objects aren't moving right away. Or if I didn't want to do that, I might take these, hold the shift key down, right click on all these keyframes, then so, uh, click the G key, bring them forward to increase the speed in the beginning part of the animation so that the collision makes more sense. Now, it's, that's starting to look a lot more natural. And then still, it's a, maybe a little fast. So shift, right click on these two keyframes here, G key, spread them out just a little bit to slow down the rebound of the collision. And then I can play it. Now, the play button only works uh, and is only accurate for you to judge things by as long as you're running at 24 frames per second. That's dependent upon your computer, and it's also dependent upon the complexity of the animation. Right now, this is really simple. I've got three objects. I've got two cubes in a sphere. So the computer's going to be able to run it at 24 frames per second pretty easily. However, if it's jittery or really slow, pay attention up here in the camera view. It will tell you how many frames per second it's running the animation at. And if it's anything less than, say, 23 or 20, you really don't want to pay attention to what the speed is because it's giving you a fake, well not, uh, a false impression of what the speed's actually going to be. And if that happens, there are other methods by which we can um, figure out what the animation is going to look like. But right now I'm running at 24 frames per second with it occasionally dipping down in the 23 it looks like, and it went red, the numbers went red there. That's telling you, hey, it's, it's dipping below, the, below what you're supposed to be seeing. But it's accurate enough, I can get an idea. And then it's, now it's fine. Okay? There are lots of things that you can do to help the animation, including baking it and doing all sorts of other stuff. Baking is a phrase that's a little weird, but we'll learn about that later. But there are things that you can do to kind of help your animation. Um, we haven't talked about the camera views yet. We'll get there. But that's basically just how you can adjust the acceleration of an object using the curve editor. Any questions? Awesome.